Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're trying to decide who to invite to your wedding, you may be asking yourself, how do I narrow down my guest list? There are a few reasons you might be in a situation. Maybe you took a look at your budget and you realized that you don't have enough money to feed 300 people, or maybe your venue has a max capacity by Cooper. Or if you're watching from the future, and no, I don't mean actually from the future, I mean if you're watching this later than 2021, hopefully this doesn't apply to you. But for us 2021 brides, there are very strict guest count limitations right now. Either way, now you are taking a look at your guest list and realizing that you need to cut it back. So how do you do that? Before we jump right in, my name is Julia and I am the owner of Julia Noel Wedding. On my channel, we talk about all sorts of wedding tips, tricks, advice, and anything else that you guys might need to plan your weddings. So without further ado, let's jump in. So whether your budget does not allow you to have as many guests on your existing list, or whether it's because of a global pandemic or any reason in between, you need to cut down your guest list. First, it's important to note that the etiquette around guest lists are changing. First, there's rising costs of weddings. So people understand that you're not able to invite every single person anymore. We are making very difficult decisions on who to invite to our weddings because weddings are expensive and you physically cannot invite every single person. For those that say, oh, you get that money back in gifts, you can never assume that your guests are going to pay for their plate. Again, times are changing. That doesn't happen all the time anymore. So so you guys need to be making your budgets based on the worst case scenario, based on not expecting assent from your guests and making sure that you can afford the guest count that you have. Now, of course, will everybody understand? Probably not. You physically cannot please everybody. You cannot please everybody. Think about it. You guys have maybe 100 guests, maybe 300 guests. Do you think you're going to be able to please every single one of them? Absolutely not. So part of this process is understanding what the pros and cons are. If you don't invite someone, is it going to upset you if they're are offended? Are you going to care if they get upset? Is that going to cause big family rifts? All of these things need to be taken into consideration when narrowing down your guest list. So with that said, along the way, you're going to be faced with many dilemmas. Weigh the costs and make sure that you can live with those consequences because at the end of the day, that's all you really can do. All right, so first, first things first, when looking at your entire guest list and cutting, before you do anything else, before you even start to think about cutting anybody, make sure that you guys are both on the guest list, you and your partner. You guys both need to be on the guest list because you guys have a plate, you guys have a seat, you guys need to count in the guest count. A lot of brides forget this, so just throwing that out there. Next. I want you to categorize your guest list. So make another column in your spreadsheet or however you're tracking your guests and put a column for different categories. For example, immediate family, extended family, friends, acquaintances, friends of parents, etc. You get the point. Bucketing your guest list will help you when you have to make certain decisions and when you have to look at how cutting one person affects the rest of the list. So grouping them is super important when looking to cutting your guest list. Kids are one way that you can cut the guest list. Now, if you have a kids category and there's only one or two, maybe it doesn't really impact your decision. But if you look at your guest list and 30 kids are on that list, that might be something you can do to make significant reduction in your guest list. Now let's talk about plus ones because plus ones are for some reason also very controversial. And my personal take on plus ones is that they are meant as a courtesy to your guests. Now think about it if the tables were turned for a second. If you were going to your cousin's wedding and you know all of your other cousins and your family and your whole family is there and your cousin doesn't give you a plus one, you're probably going to be able to have a good time because you still know everybody. You know, it's your, it's your family. Now, what if you went to a friend's wedding and you know literally no one and your friend didn't extend a plus one to you? You're going to be sitting alone or sitting with people that you don't know and that might be uncomfortable for you. You might even decide that you don't wanna go 
because you aren't going to be able to have a good time. So when you think about it that way, you might not need to give a plus one to everybody, but you should be giving a plus one to those that need one. Now, in terms of like no ring, no bring, and like all of that stuff, use your best judgment. You know your family, you know your guest list, and you know who their significant other is or whether they have a different one each week, and you can make that call. Now, exceptions. Of course, there are always exceptions. So keep that in mind too, because you know your family, you know your friends, you know your guest list better than anybody. You don't have to invite anybody to your wedding that you don't want there. So just because we say, you know, cut the plus one or don't cut the plus one, you know what makes the most sense for your guest list. If it was super obvious who you should invite and who you shouldn't invite, then you guys wouldn't be in these types of situations where you're like racking your brain trying to figure out how to cut back. So now that we've kind of talked through some of the ways that you can cut your guest list, let's go through a few questions that you should be asking yourself when you're taking a look at your guest list and trying to cut back. So question one, would you expect to be invited to their wedding? No, I didn't say, were you invited to their wedding? Because even if you were invited to their wedding, but you wouldn't have expected an invitation, maybe that means that you're not that close and maybe they just had a much bigger guest list and they were able to accommodate you. But if you wouldn't expect an invitation to their wedding, then maybe you don't have to extend an invitation to them. That's usually a reflection that you're not very close to that person and you don't need to invite them to your wedding. Do both you and your fiance know them? There are some people that have friends that their significant other has never met before. That might be a good rule of thumb to cut back. If your significant other doesn't know who they are or has never met them before, maybe they're not that significant to you as a couple and therefore they don't need a seat at your wedding. That doesn't mean that you're not friends with them, but if they don't know your significant other, do you really need them at your wedding? Does your significant other like this person? Again, you could be really close to them, you could be friends with them, hang out with them, but if your significant other doesn't like them, that might be another way that you can just cut that person off the list. Will they know other guests at the wedding? If you have to make drastic reductions, and I mean drastic reductions to your guest count, especially you know if you're having a micro wedding, then maybe you cut someone if they don't know anybody else there, or maybe they wouldn't have as much fun at an intimate event because they know no one else. Also, if you cut them and they don't know anyone else there, you're also saving yourself from having to invite a plus one for them. Would you regret not having them at your wedding in the future? Think ahead, think in five, 10 years. Are you gonna look back and be like, man, I really wish I had that person at my wedding. I really wish I had photos with this person. If you look at your guest list and you're like, I don't even know if I'll be talking to this person in two years, then that's a good indication that you're probably not that close to that person. And if you're not that close to them now, you're probably not gonna be close to them later and you can probably cut them off of the guest list. Have they been an integral part in your and your significant other's life? If the answer is no, then again, maybe you don't need to invite them. There are some people that shape us. Maybe this person introduced the two of you. They should probably get an invite. But if you're looking at your list and you're like, nope, not an integral part in our relationship at all, then maybe that's another indication that you should cut them. Once you go through all those questions and you're like, okay, we've cut as much as we can possibly cut, my favorite way of cutting guests is to use the last time that you spoke to them. <laughs> so if you look at your guest list and you are trying to cut back, ask yourself, have you spoken to them in two years? If yes, keep them, go through the list. All right, maybe you cut one or two people. You need to make more cuts, change it to a year, go through that, maybe you cut more people. Have you spoken to them in six months, three months, two months? Just keep cutting back until you have the guest count number that you need. Now, let's talk about the A-list and B-list real quick. A-list and B-list is definitely common. I personally think that if you can keep it to one list, keep it to one list. It just makes it easier. But especially in the pandemic times where we are cutting specifically to get to state and local restrictions, we don't know whether our guest count limit will be 150 people, 100 people, 75 people. We just don't know. And the regulations are changing all the time. So without knowing 
what that guest number will be by the time your wedding rolls around, you might need to make a few different lists so that you know, okay, I physically cannot make a list smaller than 50 people. So if the guest count limitation is 50 people, I'm rescheduling again. Or you know, okay, if by the time our wedding rolls around, we can only have 50 people, these are the people that we want there and these are the people that we unfortunately need to uninvite. Now, uninviting guests, definitely not easy, but you have to do it the right way. You have to communicate it gracefully, appropriately. If you guys are interested, I would be happy to share my thoughts on how to uninvite someone the right way, especially because it's really tricky. So if you want to see a video about that, let me know in the comments. Tons of thoughts on, on how to do it appropriately. Um, I've also seen a lot of people that have done it in a poor way. So, I mean, I can tell you also what not to do because let's face it, if you're in the position where you need to send on invitations, you're probably stressed, you're probably freaking out, and you're probably not thinking that you have to do this a graceful way and you're just trying to get the word out because you are trying to fix the situation and, and move on from this, but you have to do it the right way. So let me know if you want some tips and tricks on that and I'd be happy to share it with you guys in an upcoming video. All right, that's all for today, guys. I hope that was helpful for you if you're trying to narrow down your guest list. And if you wanna stay in touch with all things weddings, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I put out new content each week and I can't wait to share more wedding tips, tricks, and advice with you all. Until next time, happy wedding planning.